Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Java Beans and JSP Tags. In this video, you'll learn how JSP Tags can be used with Java Beans. You'll learn the basic JSP Tags, Use Bean, Set Property, and Get Property. And you'll watch as we create a quick JSP example that incorporates a Java Bean. Recall that a Java Bean is an ordinary Java class that conforms to the following rules. A Java Bean must have a public, no argument constructor, a default constructor. The Java Bean class attributes must be accessed via accessor and mutator methods that follow a standard naming convention, that is, get and set, or is for Boolean attributes. The Java Bean class should implement the serializable interface. A Java Bean provides a named attribute that can be accessed by the user of the object. The attribute can be of any Java data type, including classes that you define. In our case, the user of the object will be a JSP. There are three basic tags that allow us to access a Java Bean from within a JSP file. Use Bean. This tag makes the Bean available to use locally in the JSP file. Set Property which modifies a property value of the bean, and get property, which accesses a property value of the bean. Keep in mind that there are many other tags we can use with a bean within our JSP. We'll explore some of them in later videos. For now, let's take a closer look at these three tags. The use bean tag can be used in a JSP to gain access to an available bean object or to instantiate an instance of a bean object if one is not already available. The syntax of the use bean tag is shown here. The tag starts with JSP use bean. There are three parameters. ID. This sets an identifier we can use to re refer to the bean as long as the bean is available. Scope. This sets how long the bean is available for our application. Class. This refers to the bean's package path and class name. The equivalent JavaScriptlet is shown here. This is what we can replace by using the JSP use bean tag. Note how the Java logic will use an existing object if it's available, but it will instantiate a new one if it's not available. Also note how using the tag streamlines the code and provides a look that is more comfortable with web developers. Here's an example of the use bean tag for a Java bean called employee bean. Take a look at the three properties and how they are set. The ID the scope, and the class. Here's the equivalent JavaScriptlet for this example that we can replace using the useBean tag. There are a few important rules that you need to know when using the JSP useBean tag. JSP bean tags use XML syntax. This implies that they must include a slash to close the tag. The scope of the useBean tag controls how long the bean object is available. There are four levels of scope that we might use here. Page scope. This is available for the current JSP page only. Here, the bean object is stored in the page content object. Request scope. Here, the bean object is stored with the request object, so all components with access to the current request object have access to the bean. With session, the bean is stored as an attribute of the session object. So all components with access to the current session object have access to the bean. And finally, application scope. Here, the bean is stored with the servlet context object. So all components that have access to this object have access to the bean. The syntax of the set property tag is shown here. Note that it includes the name. The value for the name should match the bean's ID set in the use bean tag. It includes the property parameter, indicating the property that we want to set, and value. The value parameter indicates the value that we want to set that property to. Here is the equivalent JavaScriptlet that this bean tag would replace. So let's see an example. Here we have an employee bean where we are setting the first name property to Victor. The equivalent JavaScriptlet is basically calling the setFirstName method of the employee object. While this tag does not really reduce the amount of Java that is included in the JSP, it is still a little bit more user-friendly to web developers. 
Some rules for the set property tag include, again, the JSP tags use XML syntax, so we need to have a slash to close the tag. The name attribute of the set property tag must match the ID in the useBean tag. A good practice is to use single quotes around the values. By doing this, we can avoid the need to use escape sequences for some things like an apostrophe. Finally, the set property tag cannot be used to set null values or an empty string. The get property tag is the accessor complement to the set property modifier tag. Notice the syntax of the get property tag. It includes the name, again this matches the use bean ID parameter, and then the property that we want to get. The get property tag would replace the JavaScriptlet shown here that is calling the set property method of the object. Here's our employee example using the get property tag. We've specified the name of the tag, again matching the use bean ID, and the property that we want to access. The equivalent Java is shown here, and we have similar rules for get property, as we did for set property tag. XML syntax implies that we need to close the tag with a slash. The name attribute of the get property tag must match the ID in the use bean tag. We should use single quotes around our values to avoid the need for escape sequences. And finally, the get property tag cannot be used to get null values or an empty string. By way of example, let's create a simple JSP file that will use an employee bean object. Here in Eclipse, we can see that I have already created a simple Java bean example project as a dynamic web project. I have included in the model package a Java class called employee bean. We can see that employee bean is a Java bean because it satisfies the three rules of Java beans. It implements the serializable interface. It includes a no parameter constructor and we have private instance variables which are then accessed and modified by getters and setters that have standard names. So let's work with the JSP file to include this Java bean called employee bean. I have already created in my project an index.jsp. Let's have a look. Basic setup for the HTML page with a head and a body. This one will include a table for employee data. And you note I have the table already created with some placeholder comments where we're going to display a first name, last name, pay rate, and year properties. And what we need to do is to get an instance of our employee bean, set some values, and then display those values in the table. Now normally I might write a JavaScriptlet to do this. Instead, in this case, I'm going to use our new JSP tags. First, we need to specify the Java bean that we want to use. We can accomplish this using the JSP use bean tag. Note, as I type in Eclipse, a suggestion list is displayed and eventually I see the tag that I want. Eclipse will actually close the tag using a separate closing tag. I like mine a little bit cleaner, so I'm going to delete that and use a slash at the end of my tag. Let's include the ID parameter as employee. Let's make the scope of this bean to be a session. That means it will be accessible to later components that might be used in the application and the class we need to set to the model package dot employee bean. One thing I should do is even though Eclipse likes to generate double quotes, I prefer to use single quotes so that I can avoid using certain escape sequences in special cases involving the values of my parameters. So now that I have finished the JSP use bean tag, the employee bean class is available to access within this JSP. And so, and so far we've seen no Java. You might recall that the use bean class creates a new instance of the Java bean if one does not already exist. So we do have an employee bean object available, but because the default constructor does not set any of the instance variables, we need to set those values before we can display them in our table below on the JSP page. 
To set these properties, we're going to use the JSP set property tag. The name parameter needs to match the value that we set for the use bean ID, so I'll use employee. We then need to specify the property parameter to say which property of our bean we want to set. I'm going to set the first name property. Keep in mind that this should match our naming convention for the instance variable in our Java Bean class. Finally, I want to provide the value to set the first name to. I'm going to set that to Victor and close the tag. So at this point we have an employee bean object and we've set one instance variable, namely the first name, to the value Victor. I'm going to copy this and then paste and edit it three more times for the other instance variables. Let's set last name. I'll set that as Alan. Let's set pay rate. This is an hourly rate. I'll pay Victor Allen at the rate of $12 per hour. And finally, let's set the start year. And we'll imagine that Victor Allen started in 2010. That should set all of the properties of our Java Bean employee bean. Now all that remains is to display those in the output to the user on the web browser. So I'm going to replace each of the comment tags down here in my table with the appropriate get property tag. For the first name, I use JSP get property. I want it to get the first name and I have to set which Java Bean I'm using. So this get property attaches to the employee Java Bean and is asking for the first name. As before with set property, I'm going to copy this one and then paste and modify it for the remainder of our get property tags. Last name, pay rate, and start year. I believe that about does it for this example. Let's do a quick test. Before we run this, what should happen is we'll run the application. The server will start to run index.jsp. The bean tag and the set property will create an employee bean object and set the instance variables. Then send as a response the HTML output along with the instant variable values provided by the get property tag. Let's run this to see if that's actually what happens. Run as, run on server, make sure the correct server, hit finish. In a moment my browser should pop up with a nice table of this employee. And we see that it did. Let's take one quick look at what the browser actually received from index.jsp. I'll view the page source. As we look through this page, it looks like just generic HTML and content. No sight of the JSP tags in the output that went to the browser. So that wraps up our example for this video. To explore more about Java Beans and how to use them in JSP files, please have a look at the references shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. Background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy production.